Okay, uh, let this housing soak for a while uh, overnight and clean it up. And this is what the used housing looks like after it's all cleaned up. So uh, I wire wheeled this surface a little bit too. But uh, now I have to try and figure out how this goes back together because I know when I got this unit, the way it was put together was not correct. Um, the old housing, which is over here, is all torn up. This was all completely open in the front here. The uh, bearing was pretty much non-existent. The seal was non-existent. This was all just wide open water and mud and everything else was getting in there. And uh, this is what the shaft looked like when I got it out. Uh, has this collar right here, which doesn't exist in the parts list. Uh, I confirmed that that is just pressed, pushed onto the shaft, so that can come off. Uh, this spring was sandwiched in there and then this which is actually the inner race of what was left of the double ball bearing was on there pushed on there so I pushed all this off uh, the parts break down it almost appears like this this should be a spring between this gear area here and in here so I ordered the spring that was on the parts list which just fell on the floor actually because I wasn't sure whether or not this spring that was on the shaft was actually the spring that I think goes here. So I ordered the spring and it came in, the new one came in, and it's identical to this one. So that tells me that this was indeed the correct spring. But I don't believe it goes here. I believe this spring actually goes here. The other end of it would sit inside here like that so basically creating a situation like this which I'm not sure exactly what the purpose of that would be maybe it's like an anti-rattle spring or something like that then I don't think this collar actually belongs on here at all the reason why I believe all this is because if you put this back together the way it was You've got to pretty much push this down all the way and fully collapse that spring, which makes the spring pointless. Even to get this collar, this, this bearing, anywhere near where it should be. Uh, when you take this stuff off, you insert this in here, and then you just temporarily put the housing on. You can see that that collar that I don't even think belongs there is actually about in the position where the bearing should be. And the way I know that is because there's a very distinct area right here that the bearing sits in. Basically the uh, bearing gets pushed into here and bottoms out on this little lip and then there's a uh, retaining ring that goes in there and retains it. So that's why I believe that this spring belongs in between here and here and that this collar doesn't belong on there at all and in fact the bearing is probably going to be about in that same position which means the seal rides on an area somewhere around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, collar off and I'm going to clean up the shaft on the wire wheel. All right, I've removed this collar. Um, it was really on there tight. Uh, a lot of rust holding that on. So I'm hoping that I'm right and that this doesn't belong on there. But I cleaned it up on the wire wheel and not exactly a lot of information here. I mean, definitely there's a shoulder right here. So I guess if I put the bearing in all the way and seat it down to that shoulder, that might be where it's supposed to seat to. That would be nice. There's no definitive evidence of where the seal lip rides. There is a little imperfection right here. I mean, that might be where the seal has been riding. But I'll try and loosely fit some stuff up and see how it looks.
here's another clue as to uh, how this should be going together. Uh, this bearing was actually the bearing that came in the used housing that I bought off of eBay. This bearing was already installed. And so uh, you can actually see this is not a double row ball bearing, which is what this inner race that was sitting on here uh, you know, appears to have been a inside race to a double ball bearing, much like the kind that are used for uh, axle bearings um, or wheel bearings. So I think maybe this was another just kind of like attempt to put things together that weren't supposed to go together. So this bearing right here, uh, I'm going to get the part number off of this and see if it matches the number. See if when I cross it, if it comes up with the same number as the bearing that I got that's supposed to be the correct part number for this. Alright, I found out that uh, this bearing, after I cleaned it up, I could, uh, with a magnifying glass, I could see that the number is a 6205 Koyo bearing. And that coincides with what I had already purchased to replace the missing bearing in the, uh, in the housing here. Which is, I picked up this uh, 6205 SKF bearing, which is a top quality bearing. New old stock off eBay for just a few bucks. And uh, that's it right there. So this is the correct bearing that's going to go in the new housing. Okay, the new bearing uh, slides on pretty easily up to that point and then it kind of gets starts to get a little stiff. But I still think it's going to be a light, light press fit if I push this all the way down to the shoulder, which is where I suspect it's supposed to be. Uh, hopefully I'm right about that. So what I'm going to do to get that on there is um, I'm going to use this uh, old double bearing inner race that was on here that slides over there perfectly. i use that to protect this from getting damaged and then I can uh, just put this over in the jaws of my vise like that and give it a tap on the back and drive it right down. There's actually just a rough spot on the shaft there uh, where it had to get past and once it got past that this actually is a not even a press fit it's, a, it's almost a loose fit on there on the shaft um, but maybe that accounts for the need for this spring um, once this is all in there, it would make sense to me that this spring would uh, keep the shaft from being able to move up and down in this bearing. Okay, now I've pressed that bearing into the housing. Uh, it was actually easy to put the bearing in by taking the shaft back out and uh, push the bearing in. Uh, I'm not even sure if it will go in further, but I stopped right here because that's beyond the point where the groove is that this snap ring, which retains that bearing, actually fits into. So now I'm going to install, install the snap ring. Okay, now the uh, retaining ring is back in place, the bearing is properly installed, and now I'm going to install this seal. This seal was completely missing on the... Um, original housing and the remnants of the seal were uh, actually left in the old housing so I'm actually gonna look at that right there so that's what's left of the old one and this is the brand new one from this is the OEM Arctic Cat part and so this seal goes in with the uh, spring side of the seal facing down and that just gets pressed into here. So I'm gonna do that now. And now the seal is installed. So now um, I can put the shaft back in. And I should be able to now install this whole assembly onto the front of the rear differential. Uh, and of course I'm gonna make sure I put this new spring in here. All right, the other item that was missing off my original setup had been <laughs> long since gone probably, uh, judging from how much damage was inside that housing, uh, was the rubber boot. And this is what the rubber boot looks like. I ordered it from Arctic Cat using an Arctic Cat part number. And when it came in from the distributor, what I actually got from them, uh, which corresponds with the Arctic Cat part number, but it's actually a Suzuki part, Suzuki, Suzuki Motor Corporation right there. Uh, it's a 3435-051, and they're calling it a boot 
RR, which is probably right rear final drive shaft. So they probably use this boot as a uh, on a final drive shaft on some Suzuki models. Um, but anyways, this is what it looks like, and this is actually just a push fit pushes on here. This actually doesn't even uh, fit this outer diameter. It just kind of acts kind of like a um, a shield, and when it's pushed all the way on there, it it spins, this actually spins with the shaft and will help keep uh, mud and water and stuff from getting in there. So it's an extra little bit of protection for that seal that I installed behind here. So that's kind of nice and uh, I would think that's a good thing to have that on there. So now this is ready to be bolted up except for the fact that I uh, have to find what I do with the nuts. I've got them here somewhere in the workshop. So once I get the nuts, I'll bolt this all up. This is an interesting little gasket that uh, Arctic Cat has that basically just goes on the drain plugs for the differentials, one for the front and one for the rear. And uh, that's part number 3402-012. The description is a gasket. I never would have guessed in a million years that when it came in, it would have been a little metal thing that looks more like a grommet. Uh, but that's what it is, so we're going to put it on. All right, I looked around the shop for a while trying to figure out what I did with these nuts when I disassembled this, and then I finally realized the reason why I don't have nuts anywhere is because I hadn't taken this housing off. When I bought this unit, this was one of the uh, major issues that I saw right off the bat, was uh, the guy who owned this, he had this housing off, and the axle was in pieces, and he didn't even, I think, know how to get it all back together correctly. Um, and that was pretty obvious once I took it apart and saw the damage. So uh, today I picked up some washers and some of these nuts with the little nylon inserts in them that are self-locking. So I'll uh, bolt this on. And then uh, also on this boot that goes on the shaft here, what hold, holds that on is actually a uh, 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 clamp. It looks just like a hose clamp, but it's actually a little bit smaller, a little narrower, and uh, it actually has a um, Arctic Cat part number 3004-786, and it's actually kind of an expensive little clamp, so you could probably get a, get by with a ho hose clamp if you could find a narrow one, but uh, I got this from sledparts.com, and I got it really cheap because they were closing out a lot of their Arctic Cat stuff, so unfortunately, a lot of the things I needed they didn't have. But the things that they did have uh, that I needed were greatly discounted. So, all right. Okay, so now I've bolted this housing on. Uh, this bolt right here should face down. Just want to note that. Uh, you want to make sure that this is facing down. Uh, this bolt is actually to hold on a, I believe it's to hold on a skid plate, the front part of a skid plate that would actually cover this bottom area right here which probably isn't such a bad idea. I don't know whether or not that was an option or if that was stock. If it was stock, it was missing on my machine, and if it was an option, um, the previous owner probably never had it. I'll check that out at some point later. I already ordered a belly pan that came in for this, which is just a, a thick piece of plastic that goes underneath the whole unit, so I might very well find that there isn't much point in having this on there with that. Um, I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do. I'll worry about that when I get the machine running again. And then, um, as far as this boot goes, where this clamp is going to be located, you can, uh, I mean, possibly you could clamp it on this part, but it doesn't make much sense to me to clamp it there because this is where the spline part of the shaft is, and you'll be squeezing it on the spline part of the shaft. And then as this shaft slides in and out, the other uh, half of the axle here, this is not going to be able to move. So that makes no sense to me. And so it seemed logical to me that it must clamp on at this position here. And then as far as how far over this boot should go this way, um, I could slide it back this way further, but then it would expose this front lip of the housing. And this bell-shaped part of the boot almost seems like it's, it's designed to go over that to keep stuff from flying up and getting in there where that seal is. So... So this is what I'm going with uh, until I find out that either it doesn't practically work correctly or uh, for some other reason. But I got a feeling that this is how this is supposed to go together. Okay, I've got the axle housing and the axle on. Uh, so now I've removed the uh, filler cap for the differential, put a new O-ring on that, 
and then uh, I ordered a new bladder uh, this actually just fits onto this fitting here and what that does is that uh, allows the uh, differential to vent depending on uh, temperature changes pressure changes inside the case so you don't want negative pressure inside the case because that can actually draw contaminants in or positive pressure can actually push oil out so um, I think on new units they just have a vent tube that they attach to this and then the tube actually goes up higher somewhere on the quad so that the um, uh, the venting is acquired, uh, accomplished in that manner but on this one here they use this thing here and then the uh, one of the original ones had all holes in it it was all dry rotted and had holes in it so that's why I had to order one and then it was also held on by a little plastic wire tie which I didn't think that was correct and uh, the new one came with this little squeeze type clamp so that makes more sense to me all right this little clamp that came with the bladder is actually too small when you squeeze it down it won't go over this uh, flared end on the uh, on the um, breather tube so even if I slide it down ahead of time before I put the bladder on I can't get it to then fit over the OD here so I've got this small clamp which is just slightly larger and that should work yeah that size clamp there is a perfect fit fits snug can't get past the flared end so that's gonna hold that bladder on just fine okay time to add some oil you can get regular ADW 90 which is what is specified for this differential at the auto parts store pretty cheap but for a few bucks more uh, only about a couple dollars more actually you can get a uh, synthetic blend I'm going with this Valvoline ADW 90 Dura blend synthetic blend gives you some added benefits that you get with a synthetic oil at a fraction of the cost of full synthetic they also sell uh, I believe it's a product called Royal Purple which I guess is a full synthetic that's probably one of the best things out there but it was more than twice the cost of this bottle so I decided to go with the uh, synthetic blend and uh, you fill it through here and you fill it to within one inch of the top uh, of this opening and you do that with the vehicle level so to simulate that I just basically got some blocks under here to level the axle and differential from the front to back and left to right and now I'm gonna add the oil